In Central America, Panama is the country with the highest human development index and it also has the biggest economic growth in Latin America. Not only does it have a super modern capital, Panama City, it also has a wide array of rainforests, a desert and beautiful beaches, both on the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific one, all within driving distance from Panama City. This and its modern infrastructure has made it a favorite for retirement for many North Americans. Now, Panama has also introduced a digital nomad visa. So in this video, you will learn everything you need to know about Panama as a country, its modern capital, Panama City, and other digital nomad hotspots in the country. I will also talk about things to do in the country before moving on and explaining its digital nomad visa. And if you stay to the end, I will compare it to the digital nomad visa of its neighbor, Costa Rica, and give you my thoughts on them. If you want to re-watch any parts of this video or jump right forward to the part of the digital nomad visa, you will find the time codes down below. They will take you right where you want to go. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm passionate about traveling and learning about other cultures. Here on this channel, I'm trying to provide you with everything you need to start a digital nomad lifestyle. If that sounds like you, please subscribe below and click the little notification bell. And now, with that said, let's get right into the video. So, let's talk about Panama, or as it is officially called, the Republic of Panama. Panama has actually, in an article by Forbes, been named one of the top three destinations for digital nomads. I have to admit, when I read the article, I did not really see any reasoning behind why they chose Panama in particular, but I'll link the article down below so you can make up your own mind. Anyways. Let's talk about some facts here. Panama connects North America with South America. It also calls itself Puento del Mundo, Corazón del Universo, which translates to Bridge of the World, Heart of the Universe. As you might have guessed from this, its official language is Spanish. It borders Costa Rica to the west, Colombia to the southeast, the Caribbean Sea to the north, and the Pacific Ocean to the south. This, by the way, makes it the only place in the world where you can see a sunrise in the Caribbean and a sunset in the Pacific. Due to its rich history, it is also a multicultural melting pot, which gives you a broad array of culture to explore. When it comes to climate, it is tropical, which basically means it is hot and humid. It has two seasons. One is the rainy season and one is the dry season. The rainy season is rather long, lasting from May to January, and then from January to May you will have a shorter dry season. Another interesting fact, particularly to people from the US, is its currency. Now, I've read in different places online that the currency of Panama is the US dollar. This is not true. Panama has its own currency, the Balboa. However, the Balboa is tied one-to-one -to, -one to the US dollar, which means one US dollar will always equal one Balboa. For this reason, the Panamanians have not printed own bills. Instead, they are using the dollar bill. However, they are using Balboa coins. In the supermarket or anywhere else, you might see the price in either Balboa or dollar, which doesn't matter because, again, the value is the same. Another good thing to know, which probably makes life a lot easier when you want to travel there, is to know that Panama is outside of the hurricane belt. So that is one less thing you need to worry about. So let's talk about some digital nomad essentials. For example, internet. Panama actually has the fastest internet in the region, with download speeds of 94 megabits per second and upload speed of 14 megabits per second. Co-working spaces are widely available, so you can go there to work and connect with other experts in digital nomads, but you will also find internet in cafes and even in some of the shopping malls. When it comes to traveling and discovering the country, Panama has recently invested a lot of money into developing tourism infrastructure. Also, the Pan American Highway, which goes through the entire country, allows you to easily drive and discover the country. So, since I assume you want to be there not only to work, but also to discover the country, this makes this much easier for you. Cost of living. As usual, to get a more reliable number on cost of living, I have compared different resources, which I will all link down below, so you can budget accordingly yourself. According to Nomadlist, the average cost of living in Panama is $2,248. This differs quite drastically to the number that I found on the website Expatistan. They estimate the cost of living at 1,653 Balboa. Or dollars. 
This actually makes Panama the fourth most expensive country in Latin America to live in. Since these two numbers differ quite a bit, I would assume that it very much depends on A, the location that you choose. For example, Panama City will of course be more expensive than some other places that I will dive into in a little bit. And your lifestyle comforts that you need. For example, where do you shop your groceries? They will be cheaper on the market than in the supermarket. How often do you go out? Do you need a place with air condition? I assume most of people would want that and so on. So in order to break this up a bit, let's consult my favorite website for this, Numbio, to see some individual prices of what things cost in Panama. A meal in an inexpensive restaurant would, for example, cost you $6.75. A cappuccino would cost you $3.04. A monthly transport pass would come in at average $30. And basic utilities for an 85 square meter apartment would come in at $84.27. Internet would cost you an average of $43.93. And when it comes to rent, a one-bedroom apartment in the city center would cost you $738, whereas an apartment outside of the city center would cost you $428. So, yes, let's start with Panama City. Panama City is the capital of the country and supposedly the only first world city in Central America. It is the hub of the region and a gateway to basically everywhere, both in the country but also with its international airport. And when you look at the city skyline, the thing that you will see most, that catches the eye most, are the dozens of really modern skyscrapers. But that's not all. Panama City, of course, has another technological wonder on offer. That's the Panama Canal. If you're interested in a bit of history, I recommend that you dig into it because it didn't go smoothly and the history around it is quite gruesome. Quite a lot of people died in process of building this. Other than that, Panama is the only city in the world, actually, that has actual rainforests in its city limits. So while it offers state-of-the-art museums, theater, nightlife and all of these things, that is not the only thing you can get there. You can also have some really nice flared neighborhoods. Casco Viejo, for example, is the old town, the old part of Panama City and it's Colorful colonial architecture is a stark contrast to the modern skyscraper kind of side of Panama City. Next, we have El Valle. El Valle is a small city about two hours drive from Panama City and it is located in an extinct volcanic crater. It is a quiet town but has an active expat community and its unique location is still very close to a lot of beautiful beaches. Next on the list, Coronado. Coronado is a trendy beach town that is about one hour from Panama City. It has a large expat group and a lot of trendy restaurants, shops and things to do. Apparently a lot of Panamanians have second houses there to spend some time at the beach. Next on the list, Boquete. Boquete is for you if you are not that much of a beach person but you would really like to enjoy the outdoors. It's a little mountain town and it offers cooler weather. One fifth of its population, 5,000 people are expats here, which makes it a really big expat community, with some of them having even opened, you know, their own shops and restaurants, so you can find a lot of different cultural influences here. Last but not least, Bocas del Toro. Bocas del Toro actually has a non-profit organization that helps expats and digital nomads find housing and find their way around in the area. I will link it down below in case you decide that that is your location, you know where to find some additional help. So what makes Bocas del Toro quite special is that it is a province that encompasses both parts of Panama mainland as well as a chain of islands in the Caribbean Sea. So again, you know, a beautiful place for people who want to enjoy some water sports and the clear blue water. It is also home to tropical rainforest and some of the indigenous communities of the country. There are three main islands to Bocas del Toro, with the main one being Isla Colon. Isla Colon is the main hub of the area and the main town in it is Bocas Town. A super special thing about Isla Colon is the Playa Estrella. The Playa Estrella is also called the Starfish Beach. Why? 
because you can actually go wade into the water and you will find hundreds of starfish in the water just swimming there or lying there what whatever starfish do um, just please don't touch them so let's talk about some things to do in Panama one super interesting site that I read about is the plastic bottle village here Robert Bezo collected so many millions of plastic bottles that he decided to build a whole village out of it which is kind of impressive but also very sad thinking about the ecological impact these plastic bottles are making on the planet maybe this is something that we should and could keep in mind when thinking about all the nature related activities that we can do in panama but first of all one thing that can't be missing on the list is of course the possibility to visit some indigenous villages and learn about you know the traditional way of life in the area and in the rainforest other than that panama is a nature lover's paradise it has mountains rainforest jungle beaches and everything that you as a nature lover could do in these places as outdoor activity contadora for example is supposed to be one of the world's most beautiful beaches here you can surf scuba dive snorkel lie in the sun by the beach whatever you enjoy furthermore of course you can take walks in the jungle enjoy animal and bird watching hiking rock climbing you name it so in order to give you some ideas i'll introduce three national parks to you the first one is baru volcano national park this is the highest point of the country and it is also a volcano baru volcano is the 12th highest peak in central america you know for those of you that like a little bit of a hiking challenge and it is also the only place in the world where on a cloudless day you can see both the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. Baru Volcano National Park is located in the province of Chiriki which has another super interesting thing to offer. It is home to geisha coffee. Because of the altitude and the super fertile organic soil they grow one of the most expensive coffees in the world here. Next we have Darien National Park, which is A, a jungle, and B, the biggest protected area in Central America and the Caribbean. It is also the biggest national park in Panama. It has endless virgin rainforest, premonate and montane forests, cloud forest and war forest, as well as large mangroves, and an array of unique wildlife, including the jaguar, and the harpy eagle. In fact, after the Amazon rainforests, Darien National Park is considered the most important natural lung in the Americas. Okay, so now that I've hopefully really sparked your interest in the country, let's talk about the digital nomad visa and its details. Let's get the first and biggest one out of the way right away. You must process the digital nomad visa application through an immigration lawyer in Panama. The duration is for nine months with the possibility to extend it for another nine months. If before your visa expires you decide that you would like to stay in Panama permanently, you can apply to one of the many other residency programs in Panama. Requirements. You need to be a freelancer, a digital nomad or a business owner with an annual income of at least $36,000. You're going to need a valid passport, health insurance and a clear criminal record. So, let's talk about the process. You will have to make an appointment at a Panamanian embassy or consulate. So if you don't have one in your country, you might have to go to a neighboring country to do so, where you have to show up in person to get the application. You will need the following required documents. The application form that needs to be filled out, a valid passport, as I said, Panama requires your passport to be valid for three months from your entry date into the country. You will need to get the certificate for your health insurance that proves that you are insured in Panama. You will need a certified passport copy as well as three passport sized pictures. You will need a certificate of your clean criminal record. You need to prove that you have enough funds to support yourself in Panama and return home. You will furthermore need a certificate of good health, which you can get at a hospital. And you will need an affidavit of non-acceptance of any jobs in Panama, meaning a sworn statement that you are not planning 
to accept any jobs if you are a business owner you're not planning to provide your services to people in Panama as usual to not take any jobs out of the economy but just support the economy through your income and your spending habits and you will need to prove your annual income through bank slips for example Next, you will also need some papers that differ depending on if you are self-employed or if you are a remote worker that is employed by a company. So if you work for a company, you will need a letter signed by the legal representative of said company stating your job, your income, and what you are doing in your job. If you are self-employed, you must prove the existence of your company and bring a sworn declaration. This sworn declaration must include the business activities that you're engaged in, who your clients are, what services you offer, past revenue and projected revenue. Last but not least, you need to pay the fees, $250 to the National Immigration Agency and $50 for the visa card that you will receive. So the process, as far as I understand it, is the following. From your home country, you need to make an appointment with a Panamanian embassy, either in your country or in a neighboring country. You need to go there to get the application form. Then you need to fill in the application form and gather all your documents. With these, you will need to travel to Panama to meet an immigration lawyer who will double check that everything is in order and then send in your application, your visa application. You will then have to wait about 30 days for the application to be processed. The benefits of the Panamanian Digital Nomad Visa are that it is tax free. So you don't have to pay income tax in Panama. However, if you've stayed in Panama for six months, you can apply to be a Panamanian tax resident, which makes sense if you are a resident of a country that does not double tax. So as far as I understand it, if you are American, you always have to pay taxes in the US no matter where you are, but there are some countries where this is not the case and for you it might make sense to become a Panamanian tax resident because the tax structure is um, maybe a bit more generous than the one in your country. On the downsides, you cannot bring dependents, kids or family and well, the hassle that it seems to be to get the visa. So if the region and everything intrigued you, the nature, everything we talked about in the first part of the video, but you really don't want to go through the hassle or you are a family and you want to bring your kids and dependents, why not consider the digital nomad visa to Costa Rica, which is Panama's neighboring country, offers a lot of the same natural beauty with a lot less of the hassle. I have reviewed it over here last week, so if you want more details both about the country and the visa process, check that video out. With that said, I hope that this video provided you with a lot of value. Personally, I don't see the benefit of going through all that hassle, but that's just me. So I hope I see you here next week. Bye-bye.